Okay, now we have found our cropping and we have put it as a layer on top of our original exposure. And now we'll take that cropped layer and we want to make sure using the move tool that our guides match it, like stick right to the sides. Because all of that we simply did so that we know exactly where we will crop our photo at the end. But we're still going to process the whole photo, not just the cropped section. Okay, so now that this is saved, we've taken care of the formal element of composition and format. We've done the best we can with this exposure. And my exposure shows that I have enough information to go beyond that. The next thing I need to worry about is lighting. And not color, but value range. So you'll notice there's a big difference between the value range in my photo and this. And there's a lot of difference in color too that we'll get to later. But the most obvious difference is my shadows are not as black as the shadows here. So this is now when I make a duplicate of the original layer. So I go to the background and I hit Command J to make a copy. This top layer, I'm going to double click and I'm going to name this um, a cropping mask. And then I'm going to click on the lock so I don't accidentally process that or move it. Because God forbid I use the, the move tool and accidentally click on it and move it out of place. Now it won't, whoops, <laughs> now it won't let me select that layer. It won't let me because it's locked. But if I ever lose, lose my place and don't know how it's supposed to crop at the end, that layer is there letting me know. Once it's, it's locked, then I turn it off. I don't need it anymore until the very end. Okay? And now I'm going to work on my background copy. I also don't need my guides. I don't want to move them, but I just want to turn them off. So I'm going to hit Command semicolon or go up to View, Show, and unclick, uncheck the guides. Okay, now this is a lot like our contrast and texture projects. The first thing I do with my copy is I go up to Image Adjustment Levels. And squinting at it for lights and darks, not worrying about color, I'm going to try to make my levels match. So basically, I'm ignoring the histogram somewhat. And I'm squinting and trying to get to solid black, at least in some parts of this. The problem is, I don't want solid black in the eyes. And I definitely don't want to go beyond the histogram and the lights. But I could optimize the histogram on this side. Because the histogram shows you where your visual information is. And I don't want to lose anything. Then I can take the midtones and I can deepen them or I can lighten them. So maybe about like that. I'm also seeing now that my lighting was just a little bit misdirected. I needed to have it a little bit more in front of the subject like I've shown here so that I would catch some light on this cheekbone and in this eye. But instead I don't have that so I'm gonna have to fix that with with other tools. Alright, so now I've made that change. I've deepened the levels. Now I have to try to match the highlights. And so I'm going to make another duplicate, just so you can see this whole step. And instead of fixing the, the levels across the whole image, I am now going to use what's called the dodge tool. And the dodge tool looks like a black lollipop because in a dark room that's what this tool looks like. And it will lighten up aspects of the exposure. I want to go to my top settings here. I want to pick a brush that's fairly large, a little bit larger than a pencil eraser because I'm using a stylus. So the harder I press, the more of that little circle will fill up. 
I want its hardness to be zero so that the edges of it are extremely soft. And I want to be using one of these two center brushes because these are the pressure sensitive for size. So I'm going to use the hardness zero at about that size. And now what does it do? I'm going to set its range to be in the midtones. And this tool is just like using levels, but it's using it at the point of your mouse or at the point of your stylus. And I want my exposure to be less than 30. I want it to be really subtle, so I'm, I'm only going to do an exposure of 15 to make very small adjustments. And now I'm going to paint anywhere I need it to brighten up. And so I know I need this cheekbone lighter. So I start painting it and it will bring out the lights in that part of the exposure. And I know I need the ridge and the brow above this eye to be brighter. Now ignore that it's making it a lot more colorful. That's another tool we'll adjust. For now, this is what's called dodging. And I'm getting my midtones that I need. Because my lighting direction wasn't right on, I have to build in that lighting. It's like plastic surgery. I also have to extend the lighting on the chin just a little bit. But otherwise, the lighting on this side of the face looks pretty good. If I squint, the highlights are where they're supposed to be. I guess I could have a little bit more brightness in the forehead right there and maybe in the brow ridge right here. Now you'll see when I use dodge in the lighter parts of the face, it doesn't mess with the color so much. But when I use it on dark shadows and really force those shadows to be lighter, it gets really, really saturated really quickly. I also want to brighten up the eye here. But notice, because I'm on midtones, it won't get rid of my deepest shadows, which is good. I still want the blacks in the eye. Now, in general, our exposures show more in the darks than they do in the light. So it's, it's pretty easy to bring out detail from areas that look like they're lost to shadow. So the camera can see in the dark better than we can, basically. Okay, so that's dodging. And so I'm going to label that my dodge layer. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of it, Command J. And now I'm going to call this my burn layer. Because just like I had to adjust the lights, the highlights going in, now I have to adjust the shadows and make some of these shadows a lot deeper than they were. So underneath the dodge tool is what's called the burn tool. And it looks like a hand cupped into a circle because that's how you channel extra light in the dark room to let it get more exposed on the photo paper in some areas. And the same exact thing, I'm gonna use that brush. I'm gonna use it a little bit bigger than a pencil eraser. It's pressure sensitive. And I'm gonna make it exposure well less than 30 because it's a really strong tool at about 15 and I want it to only affect the midtones for this first round. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to darken the shadows on the face, taking their midtones down and on the side of the nose here. And you'll see it, as I darken, it actually takes color away. So dodging into the midtones made the, to make them brighter brought out too much color, and now um, burning into the midtones takes that color away. I have to obliterate this nostril completely. <laughs> and that's not quite fair, because you don't have the same faces and the same noses. So maybe I'll leave a little bit of it. But I've got to age you a little bit. And over 
there on, the, on that cheek right there? Uh huh. It's a little bit darker, or is it just? Well, he has. Yeah, he has all these extra oh, creases. Okay. And I don't want to invent that right. in you. I just want to kind of bring out what's already there. I kind of gave you an extra crease there. <laughs> that's, that's no problem. <laughs> what about the far right, where it's a little shaded on his cheek, on the far right. on, on his right side? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so first I'm going to do kind of the safe areas where I know I can darken a lot. Okay. And then, just like I did with the brightening on this side, then I'll go in and I'll kind of touch up some areas in other places. Now, these are largely just like little touch-ups, right? And even at 15%, it, it makes a pretty strong impact. Okay, yeah, now on this side, I can darken this plane of his face a little bit. And when I, when I burn into things that are lighter than the midtones, you'll see that it starts to bring out more color again. So dodging and burning really messes with your color. And that's why we're not processing the color until after we've done this. I can also darken your eyebrows a little bit. Now this is just weird, right? And it feels like painting, but it's not really painting. What we're doing is selectively overexposing and underexposing using the pixels that are already there. So just deepening their shadows and midtones and contrast. All right, and remember we do these on duplicates because whenever we're doing something by hand, and this is true in the dark room too, we tend to overdo it. So if I go back to my original, that's a big difference. But you'll see, we'll, we'll be able to make it look pretty naturalistic. Okay, so that's my burn layer. <coughs> now we can just make a duplicate of that and I'm going to play with the color, okay? Now the first thing I need to do is get rid of where the color is so bright, like way too saturated. And I use the other tool that's in the same drawer, which is called the sponge tool, to adjust the color effects that happen when you dodge and burn. So the sponge tool, same thing, same brush, same size, same, instead of exposure, they call it flow, but same strength but I want it to first desaturate, to take excess color away. And so now I'm gonna go in these really colorful areas where I dodged it, and I'm gonna paint it with this desaturating sponge. To knock that color down a little bit. So it's not so strong. And you'll see why using the stylus is really helpful because you, you end up doing a lot of painting. Now, if you do it too much and you do it in an area that's not oversaturated, it just starts to look gray. So anywhere I feel like there's kind of little spots of too much color. This is all spot correcting. My eye is very, very orange still. So I'm just desaturating it a little bit. Okay, next. There are areas where it got too um, if too much color got removed, though I don't really have that problem, I could switch its mode to saturate and I could use the sponge tool to bring color back. And it won't change the value, it will just bring in more saturation. Like on the nose, the nose got very gray when I burned it. I like that term burning because it's like ash that you've sustained in a fire. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so now I've got slightly more naturalistic color. There's some spots that...